Hey guys, welcome back to RMA Garage. We are so glad that you joined us today. Uh, we have got our RV back from storage and we are loving it, except I live half of my driveway, which is a bummer, but hey, at least it's accessible and we can do some videos and tell you guys all of our experiences and hopefully uh, shorten those learning curves, right? So we are talking about tires and we had an issue end of last year with a very bad tire vibration. Uh, we thought it was a balance problem. Uh, we had the tires balanced, uh, I believe two times and we could not get the vibration out of the, out of the coach. Uh, it was so bad that I could not drive over 65 miles an hour. That vibration we believe was caused by flat spots from the RV sitting too long. The RV sat from July to October uh, before we had kind of did a little trip and my wife was complaining about some vibration in the front end. So we had those wheels balanced and the guy had told us, hey, you got a flat spot. Well, we thought, eh, it'll, you know, no big deal. It's nothing that we really dealt with in the past. And it was like, well, you know, once we run it a little bit, it'll be fine. Well, we didn't think that the rear tires were having the same uh, situation. Uh, she didn't experience uh, the vibration in the coach more though so than in the front, or at least it was only noticeable in the front. Well, when we decided to drive down to Florida for Christmas, we couldn't drive over 65 miles an hour because the thing was vibrating so bad. Uh, so we got them balanced when we were in Florida thinking, well, hey, maybe that's what the problem was. Well, it wasn't. It basically, I think even made it worse because they were trying to balance a tire that had flat spots, which they didn't tell us, which was another source of contention with me. But regardless, uh, that is the issue that we had. Now, how did we get flat spots? It sat too long uh, in super hot weather. Uh, you figure, um, August and September were some of the hottest months in 2020 for us. And we should have moved the RV more. We should have rotated the tires. We should have done some things to prevent that. Uh, but all in all, we ended up having to buy new tires. Um, the tires that we ended up going with were called Nexen, N-E-X-E-N. -E uh, -E -E uh, never heard of them really before, except I started going on some of the forums and uh, people were raving about these. I really wanted the Michelin uh, Agilis um, Cross Climate, I believe they're called. I'll um, post some things down below. Uh, but that was really the tire that I wanted, uh, but my dealership could not get that tire. So we ended up going with this tire. So, hey, if you guys know anything about this tire, uh, drop some comments below. Let me know if I made a right decision or not. Uh, they cost just over $1,100, uh, but hey, it's what you got to do. You own an RV, you got to be able to drive it, right? Why did we get flat spots? We didn't move the RV. And apparently uh, flat spots are more prone when it is warm than when it is cold. So when we stored throughout the winter, no issues. I mean, we've stored this thing for three years now, no issues at all. Well. 2020 didn't go anywhere was real warm uh we got flat spots so what we're going to be doing now uh we're either going to drop the levelers take most of the weight off uh drop the levelers jack up a tire spin it drop it back down or i don't know maybe just go for a drive maybe once or uh twice a month or maybe once a week um i <laughs> really don't want to have to replace these again uh if you have an rv and it's sitting for a long time uh, you definitely want to rotate those tires. You don't want to develop flat spots because there really isn't anything you can do that we found to, el to eliminate that problem other than buy new tires. Okay guys, so here are the tires. Like I said, Nexen, uh, they are, the model is a Rodian CT8 HL. And I don't know if I'm saying Rodian right. If I'm not, tell me. <laughs> uh, so the tire size is a 225-75R16, which is what was on there before. And the load rating is a 115-112R, and it is a 10-ply tire. Now the original tire was a, um, it was a General Grabber HTS, um, and it was a 115-112 on the load rating. I really wanted 
the uh, the Michelin, but like I said, my dealership could not get it, uh, so we ended up going with this. Um, the actual tire tread, not not too bad. Really, three large uh, rain channels. It should uh, divert the water pretty well. Not so much aggressive tread, so we're not going to be <laughs> doing any mudding with them, but uh, it certainly does look like a highway tire. So the next thing I want to bring up are the valve stem extenders for the inner dually. Uh, these are the stock uh, extenders and I do not like them. They, I believe, leaked on me. I was constantly checking air. The inner dually was always low and I think this was the culprit. So to alleviate that problem, we ended up going with Wheelmasters. Um, nice chrome uh, valve extensions. Um, you can put them on with a wrench. Uh, you do not have to spin the entire valve stem. These kind of have a swivel at the bottom and uh, just don't over tighten them. Uh, you can spin a valve stem real easy. Uh, but these are really nice. Uh, I have them installed on mine right here. They're pretty, uh, pretty stout. Uh, make sure that you um, put those on before you get new tires or you balance them because I'm pretty, they probably do affect the balancing a little bit. Uh, but you want to make sure that you put them on before you do any wheel work. But again, uh, Wheelmasters highly recommend over stock. So I also put a valve extension on the front wheel and it does stick out a bit, but I wanted to show you guys the actual lug nuts stick out further than the valve stem. Uh, definitely have to be careful with curbs though, but the reason why I put this valve stem on is when we go to air up the tires, um, the chuck that we use, uh, especially if you're on the road, uh, it's not just a push in, it kind of is the one that's kind of angled. And it was very difficult to try and get that on there. We actually had to run the hose this way and get it in between, and then you can stick it on and air the tire up. This makes it so much easier. Also, you can buy a, an, an inflator that pushes on, but most of the time the tire gauges have the angle piece. And again, it was so difficult to try and get the angled uh, chuck on here. So we put this extension on and it just makes it so much easier. You can, you know, take it off, um, check the pressure, fill it up and ha not have any issues. Now, again, we had these installed before we got the new tires and it just uh, makes sure that when we balance the wheel that everything was proper. During our question and answer period, somebody asked um, if we were going to uh, carry a spare or if we carried a spare. And right now we do not, and I did not buy a seventh tire to put in the trunk. Uh, but I did measure this, and this is roughly 26 inches tall, uh, which uh, when you measure 26 inches in the basement here, um, the tire does fit uh, in this. There's a wheel well right here. Um, and you know, it'll, it probably comes up to about to here. Uh, so it's not that big a deal. I, I could fit one in here, no problem. I probably wouldn't uh, mount it on the rim. I'd probably just have a, a tire, just the rubber itself, because it would be a little lighter. Um, and then if we did have an issue and we had to replace a tire, then at least I had a tire for the uh, uh, company to put on. We didn't have to wait for it. Um, so, hey, give me your comments and thoughts. Uh, what do you guys do? Um, might think about um, buying an extra rim and a tire uh, and mounting it to the uh, to the bumper here. Um, I'm not sure if they make a kit um, for this RV, but I have seen it going down the road. Guys have had tires mounted to the back at this bumper. Uh, so it's something that we may consider in the future, but right now elected not to go with it. Uh, so good decision, bad decision. Let me know. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys learned something. I know we did. It cost us a little bit of money, but we now know how to take care of our tires and to watch out, making sure that we don't get flat spots. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or hey, you wanna inform me on something maybe that I don't know, please leave a comment below. I read all the comments. I respond usually within 24 hours and I love them. I've actually learned more from you guys uh, as well as me helping you guys. So I appreciate it. Keep them coming and let's grow the community more videos on the way. I've got uh, some other things that we're going to be doing with the RV. 
uh, some of the things that we bought. And if you remember our Q&A, we've got a lot of good video ideas out of that as well. So stay tuned, appreciate it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.